You're welcome. Come in. And you, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Yes, well, I Well, man, shut the door. She's after me. Aye, there she is, the wild, mischievous creature. Look at her. Did you ever see anything so brazen? But the state's empty. Eh? Oh, she's gone. She faded away the moment you looked out. Excuse me, sir, but uh, who faded away? Well, the ghost of my ancestress, Heather. Oh, her ghost? Uh, her ghost. And a more impudent, saucy ghost you won't find in the whole of Scotland. Oh, I'm in need of a stimulant. A uh, cup of tea, perhaps? No, thank you. Not that habit. But maybe you have a wee drop of Scotland's gift to civilization. Say no more. No, it's upsetting being followed by a ghost. Oh, forgive me. Allow me to complete the introductions. Uh, Dr. Watson, uh, Mr. McGregor. How did you know I was Malcolm McGregor and Lear de Brehalach? I didn't, sir. Only that your name is McGregor. Your time. I am, sir. And I wish to sell it. But she won't let me. Heather? Yes. Every time a buyer is handing over the money, she whisks in and scares them off. Thank you, Doctor. It was necessary. Yes. You say she scares them off? Money, Mr. McGregor? I am, Mr. Holmes. The mortgage in my castle is due at midnight tomorrow night. Mr. Holmes, I have one last chance and you've got to help me. An American is coming to look at the painting at the castle tomorrow. You must stop Heather from scaring him off. If you don't, I lose my castle. You know, Holmes, she's a very pretty ghost. We'll take her case, Mr. McGregor. I cannot thank you enough, Mr. Holmes. Not at all. Now, you will take the Royal Scots train from the London Euston station. At nine o'clock tonight. Uh, three minutes past nine. As you say, Dr. Watson, you will take that to Glasgow, and at Glasgow you will change to Buchanan Street to the Highland Railway there. Ask them to put you off at Bray Halach Holt. Uh, thank you, Mr. McGregor. There is just one more thing, Mr. Holmes. Will the price of your railway fare be included in your fee? Or will I have to give you that out of my own pocket? <laughs> now, it's included, sir. You're a gentleman, Mr. Holmes. You are a great gentleman. You tell me there's very good grass shooting up at Brehala. Hello, Holmes. What have you found there? Woman's glove. Mm -hmm. Mid-18th century. Curious place to find it, Watson. Very curious. Yeah. I've been in Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson. I'll see that your bags are put in your room. That's an experience I never thought I'd have, being piped into a Scottish castle. I wonder who he was announcing us to. Oh, the ghost, perhaps. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, sirs, the McGregor has gone to the village this afternoon. He intends to remain there until this evening, when he fetches the American from the station. He begs your pardon. Do me, old place, this. Damn, too. I shouldn't wonder if the laird has rheumatism. Hmm. Hello, 8.30. He hasn't got much time till midnight. You know, it's odd, Watson. That portrait. Do you notice that the... My house.
quiet. It's, it's... Shh, shh, shh. Better come closer. Reflect and then you'll plainly see the McGregor fortune hung with me. A curse on all who dare conspire to take me down from all the fire. What's in the candelabra? This is the only way she could have come. Fifty feet straight down from here. Oh, there's nothing here, Watson. Let's go and have another look in the hallway, shall we? All right. Is it me you're looking for? Yes, Heather, it's you we're looking for. <laughs> Your glove? Did I drop my glove somewhere? I think you remember. Would you care to have it back? Are you sure it's only the glove you want to give me? What else, then? A kiss, maybe? <laughs> Say, Holmes, well, that's most extraordinary, Watson. Well, I'm afraid we must score one for Heather, and a very neat one. <laughs> now, Holmes, I don't want to seem ridiculous, you know, but... I know, old chap, it's quite inexplicable, for the moment, anyway. Yes, but... Well, well, I mean, it makes the chills run up and down your spine, and those tinkling bells, well, what did it all mean? I wonder who owns the mortgage on this castle? A Mr. Ross, the laird said, though I can't for life me thinks what he wants the place for. After all, it can't pay for itself, and it's in very poor condition. Well, undoubtedly, Watson, we could uncover something if we worked in that direction. But I'm afraid we haven't got the time to investigate. We must attempt to deal... Uh, more directly with our attractive ghost. Have you got a scheme, Holmes? Let's just say I have a notion. Oh? Well, the ghost is bound to appear for the benefit of Mr. McGregor's American client. When she does, we'll be quite prepared for her. And how does one prepare for a ghost? By first deciding if she is a ghost. Well, Holmes, what's your plan? There are two tiny alcoves at the head of the stairs. Oh, just a few feet after the turn. Mm. Each of us hides either side of the stairway. We can see ourselves. And when Heather comes down to make her appearance, she has to pass by one of us. And as she passes one of us, one of us will take her. No, 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 no. Let her come down and give her performance. That will establish her guilt. Then when she goes to make her exit back up the stairway, we jump out and nab her. Brilliant, Holmes. And since the lair should be returning shortly, we won't have very long to wait. Take the right, Watson. I'll take the left. Right, you are. I pin in the McGregor and Mr. Samuel Scott. Thank you, partner. That's right nice. There was a couple of gents here. Well, McLeish said they were here. Uh, they'll be taking the air, maybe. That the great work of art I'm going to take back home? Yes, Mr. Scott, that's a portrait of my ancestress, Heather. That's the work of a master, Mr. Scott. Away with you, you heartless ghastie! Be gone with you! Don't you see I'll lose my castle? Reflect, and then you'll plainly see the McGregor fortune hung with me. A curse on all who dare conspire to take me down from over the fire. Come back here. 
Come back, you brazen warlock, and have it out with me! You cannot do this to me, Heather! You cannot do it! Come back! Go! Well, I didn't see her go no place! Holmes, did you get her? No, didn't she pass you? No, I thought she'd passed you. But well, I thought the same thing. Why, Holmes, it's, it's... Yes, I know. It's impossible. And now we return to the case of the haunted Gainsborough. Coyotes and rattlesnakes. That's all we got where I come from. Never heard tell of a ghost. Why does she do this to me, Mr. Holmes? It's not her castle, no. It'd suit me if you'd give me the picture and let me ride out of here, lad. You mean, Mr. Scott, do you mean that you you still want the painting? Well, I wouldn't want it said I got scared out of a deal by no lady. Even if she wasn't no lady. What do you want for the picture? Five thousand pounds. What will you take? One thousand. It's a deal. You're a gentleman, Mr. Scott, a great gentleman. Well, let's go and have our supper. My appetite's returning. It'll be like a feast to me now. Will you be so kind as to follow me, gentlemen? What has she done to me? Now listen, McLeish, you must go back to Mr. Scott. Keep him entertained. Keep him out of here as long as you can. But by no means tell him about this. Aye, I'll do my best. As long as there's food, he'll stay, I think. Heather, Heather, give it back to me. It is my own portrait. And you will not sell it, Malcolm McGregor. Have you no consideration for pity's sake? She's gone. You cannot catch a ghost. You find something, Holmes? Our first material evidence. The tinkling sound. Hmm. It was sewn to something. Probably a glove. Well, I must say, Holmes, I'm very relieved. Well, I'm not relieved. It's 11.15 already. My painting's gone and soon I'll lose my castle. Now listen. You must say nothing about this to Mr. Scott. If he comes in here, tell him that you're having the painting packed. He must be kept willing to buy until midnight. But there's nothing to buy now. There will be. That Holmes. Runs like an antelope. I've told you four. Take no chances. I've fed up the same old routine again and again. I didn't like your variations. What do you mean? I read my lines straight. I'm a professional actress and talented. You're a distressful man. I know that you don't. I'll tell you better of that when I go to collect my castle. Can't see what you want with this tumble-down old place. There's more in it than meets the eye. I appreciate you having the picture created for me. If it's ready in time, I might break camp and ride out of here tonight. Mr. Archibald Ross.
take note of the fact that I'm not piped into the castle. Ooh, only welcome guests of the lair are piped into McGregor Castle. Well, if you want my opinion, I didn't like the way you blew the pipes anyway. You would not know good piping from bad. Your mind's too full of mortgages. And if we're passing opinions, Archie, tis mine that you're a disgrace to the whole of your clan. Pack your pipes, McLeish. You're leaving soon. Well, where's my money, Laird? You'll get your money before midnight, Archibald Ross. I've still half an hour left. And where do you hope to find it in that space of time? I've sold the portrait of my ancestress, Heather, to Mr. Scott here. You've sold it? But I see no portrait there to be sold. I've taken it down to be packed. You're lying. I can pay you now, Laird. Might save you a little trouble. Besides, I'd like to settle the deal and get out of here before that ghost lady turns up again. I'll be back at midnight, or a wee bit before. Again? And it's got to be the most frightening performance of your life. What, now? No. I want to see it. Give me ten minutes to get down the passage and out the door. I've got to return by the front door again, you know. I'll give you a performance, Dux. It'll scare even you. That's a fine lass. I can see the news spreading like a prairie fire. All the way to El Paso, most likely. Sam Scott just trudged in from Europe, lugging a genuine Gainsbow. A what? A Gainsbow pitcher. Oh, I see. Mr. Archibald Ross again. Well, McGregor, you're lacking breath, Archibald Ross. You needn't have run. There's still time. I wasn't sure of the time. Oh, I can't see the clock from here, but there is time, I'm telling you. upon him who defies my wish, my word, and my will. His deed will be done at midnight. So I lay my curse upon him to commence at that hour. He will live his days in the misery of loneliness. He will live his nights in the horror of fear. Terror will follow him like a shadow through both day and night. Quickly, Watson. Is she all right, Watson? Uh, yes, only fainting. Mr. Holmes, is it really you? Yes, Mr. McGregor, would you look after the girl? Dr. Watson and I must go after the painting. I suppose you got what you deserved, but I must admit that you got the worst of the scaring business. Come, lassie, and I'll take you upstairs and find a room where you can rest. Well, Watson, when our first trap failed, there was only one answer. A secret passageway. But I wanted the ghost with it. I say, Holmes! The painting. Ah, good Watson. Well, what have you got there? Well, it appears to be the flans of McGregor Castle. Ah, yes, of course. This would explain Heather's fantastic exits. This whole place is honeycombed with passageways. And here's something that interests you, Watson. An entrance to the passageway through the stone floor of the battlements. So that's how she first disappeared on us. Feel much better now. Mm. 
Well, we must get the portrait back to Mr. Scott and uh, close the sale before midnight. Well, what are you going to do now, Laird? You have five minutes left by your own clock. Sassenach. You couldn't be mistaken. You're quite sure. Well, Mr. McGregor, here's your portrait. Well, you might just as well take it back where you found it. The buyer's gone and he won't come back. Thanks to your wild theatricals, Mr. Holmes. Watson, take the picture and hold it up in front of the fireplace. All right. Right, then. That's it. The McGregor fortunes hang with me. Is it a curse? Or is it a clue as to where the treasure is stored? Hmm. Now, let us imagine that she is uh, above the fireplace. Which way is she pointing? Well, I'd say that blank wall over there. Well, you're ignoring the most significant part of the portrait. Note the wedding ring on the right hand, the sash on the left shoulder, the clan badge on the wrong side of the bonnet. In fact, everything in reverse. Well, I've never noticed that before. Well, Gainsborough painted her reflection. Reflect with me, and you will plainly see that she is actually pointing over there. But that's actually about that newel post. This treasure I swear to keep until a McGregor has sore need of it. And may this Bible guard it well. Heather McGregor, A.D. 1746. Oh, Heather, I could hug you. Scraps of paper, every one of them. The pound notes. The real pound notes. Aye, worthless ones issued by Bonnie Prince Charlie before he fled. The McGregor treasure. I'll take the deed to my castle. One moment, Mr. Ross. I've had enough of your tricks. This happens to be an original Vettenberg Bible. Unappreciated in 1746, it is worth approximately 5,000 pounds today. It makes no difference. The castle's mine and the Bible goes with it. And conspiracy to defraud. And also sufficient witnesses. Not alone with your accomplice, and above all, the enormous sums that I personally can sue you for, for the shock to my nervous system because of that dreadful false ghost. What a mind could invent such a diabolical thing. You, sir, are probably liable to spend the rest of your life in prison. Huh? <sighs> Mr. Holmes. You're very welcome, Heather. Thank you for finding the treasure and saving the castle. You're too good an actress for this kind of work, Heather. But I was up to your tricks all along, though. It would be very difficult for a woman to fool a strong and intelligent man like you, Dr. Hudson. Good day and good trip.